Okay, so um, I want to talk about clustering, and this is grouping together similar items. So um, this gets used for recommendation engines. So if, if I'm someone who's keen on buying uh, sports cars, then a, class, a clustering uh, technology will know how to group car sales and car sale ads into that cluster of sports cars and i'll start to see sports car spam in my facebook feeds or whatever I, what it, or my whatever i'm um, visiting sites that are uh, using google ads or whatever um th 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 i'll start to see this sort of stuff so how, how do we know what belongs inside sports cars and what's not because there's obviously quite a lot of stuff that's uh, on the boundary and Clustering is all about trying to uh, work out what sensible groups are and what, what useful groups are. And so some other, other examples, medical uh, imaging. So if you're trying to find in a, you might have a, um, an ultrasound scan or an x-ray of some kind and there's a shadow on the lungs or in a part of the body or, or whatever. And you're trying to work out, is that a, a um a, a cancerous growth or is it just uh, um, a little bit of uh, body fat or a, a bit of whatever um a a um, clustering uh algorithm will group the image that it saw uh, it, it's seeing into one of those groups it's it's one of the good ones it's one of the bad ones or whatever so so we're trying to group things to things together and some of the common algorithms is k-means and x-means I'll, I'll show you what uh that that algorithms are about in a little picture shortly. And we're also going to briefly talk about dimensionality reduction. Um, and <clears throat> that might not be obvious what I'm talking about there to start with, but I'll hopefully I'll, I'll explain that as, as we go. I'll do it in two steps. So um, hopefully you'll bear with me till we get some ni nice examples of that. Okay, so um, Clustering is about grouping stuff. And there's a whole lot of different possible ways to group stuff. So here we've got some uh, dots of things and we're grouping them in, in, into different groups. And I, I won't spend the whole lot of time on this little picture, but on the left-hand side, I've used a k-means algorithm and I've grouped the things on the left-hand side. And it's decided the left-hand side of the graph is red and the right hand side is blue and it's picked out where all the dots would be whereas over on the right hand side it decided all the inner ones was one cluster of stuff and all the outer ones was another cluster and which of those is the right way to group things depends on what the data is sometimes you exactly want what's happened on the right hand side there and sometimes you want what's happened on the left hand side and so what we need to do is do a bit of exploration and some smarts and and Un try to understand our data and we're, so we're going to apply some different algorithms see what comes out try to visualize what's happening and make some sense of it and then re we might recycle around that data science loop and, and switch to a different algorithm and see if we get better results and so on um, one of the things that you probably need to do when you're classifying stuff is dimensionality reduction what oh, I'll come up with, I'll show you a better example of that later, but it turns out, you know how we were looking at those 2D plots, bubble plots, and then, then I did a 3D one for the house prices. Um, and we were looking at bedrooms and pricing and whatever on the different elements. If you had all 20 features of that house pricing thing, how would you graph what that looks like? You actually need 20 dimensions, which is sort of a, a, moving in time and space and several other uh, uh, dimensions to try to visualize what would be going on there. So what you need to do in, in systems which start to get complex like that is you map all those different dimensions down into a smaller number of dimensions. And it can be th thought of like um, doing a, if, if I had a 3D 
blob of some kind and I do a single slice through it, I'll then get a 2D image of that slice. And then I might do another slice and get another 2D image. And that might be a way to help um, visualize what's happening in that 3D blob by <clears throat> mapping it down into this sort of space. And we'll see see that once we, uh, uh, once we get to uh, this uh, the, our example. So this is our example. This is, uh, we, we've got whiskey. So for the whiskey boff, which is supposedly happening um, at, at the Apache Con session at some time, I'm not sure what, what the, the deal is. I, I'm waiting for my um, whiskey bottles to turn up. Um, we're we're going to we're going to do some classification. So we've got this is a sample of data that you've got the URLs there. It's um sorry it's in fi very fine print if you're uh, watching this on a, on, a, on a very large screen. But all of the URLs, all of the uh, things to get all the this data yourself is all there, and it's all in the repo anyway. The the sample that we're using. This is this went and looked at eighty six different Scotch whiskies. So Scotch whiskies, Scotch is a, a um very strong flavored uh, alcoholic beverage. And if you've never drunk scotch before and you drink any two of them, you're probably gonna, your, your mouth will just explode and you'll say, oh, yuck, what's this strong uh, tasting thing? You taste another one and you're gonna get that same reaction and probably not know the difference. But over time, if you've tried quite a lot of different scotches and you get used to the different uh, nuances of, of different kinds of scotches, the experts can pick out a whole lot of different subtle uh, flavor profiles, they call them. So they pick out uh, smoky, sweetness, nutty, malty, fruity, floral, and so on. So there's a whole bunch of different things. And so f when I go and look at that, I look at smoky and I look at tobacco and I think, isn't it like smoking and tobacco, aren't they the same thing? Well, the, the experts would tell you, no, they're totally different uh, subtle flavor um, nuances to, to scotch that some some of them have um, very, very strong smoky and not strong tobacco and some are vice versa. And they're regarded as very, very different uh, drinks. And so this particular um, data science um, activity, they went and co collated all this different information and, and collected ratings of all, of all these different uh, profiles from a whole bunch of different people and collated it all together. And to cut a long story short, um, whiskies that people really, really enjoy often have a small number of those profiles in very, very strong degrees and not very, very strong in a whole bunch of other ones. And different people will like different parts of the spectrum or different parts of that. And so it's it's good to be able to come up with a model of, of, of how you might cluster different groups of, of Scotch whiskies, And then you can then use that. If you like one of the whiskies that's in that cluster, you particularly like it, then you might go and um, buy another whiskey that's in that cluster. And it's a good chance that you'll uh, enjoy that, that particular whiskey. Or if you're looking for something different, you'll go pick something that's in a different cluster. So it's up to you to decide anyhow. So they've gone and done all this and they've grouped all these things. And what I want to uh, look at is how on earth we would um, try to visualize uh, all this particular information. It turns out to be very, very hard when you've got all these different dimensions. So if I plotted sweetness on one axis and uh, honey, uh, spicy on one axis, I could put all of the, in a two dimensional graph, I could plot every single whiskey on that graph. That would be a good way to visualize those two dimensions. If I then wanted to also look at fruity, I could do a third dimension and now I could plot all the whiskies in those three dimensions. So then I've got my, that bubbly type thing that I was showing around on the screen before. With the fourth dimension, I might pick nutty. Um, now, how do I visualize that? I can do four dimensions by introducing time or I can do, artificial things like, well, not artificial, I can introduce color. So nutty things might, things that are very nutty might be a very strong color and not much nutty might be a very weak version of a color or a different color. I can introduce the size of the blobs, maybe um, the medicinal flavor there is uh, 
something with strong medicinal will be big and something with lack of medicinal will be small. And then I start running out of options. Uh, I'm sort of stretched. What do I start doing? Do I start drawing striped patterns on my blobs or something? And it gets really, really hard to visualize that. So what you want to do is have ways to reduce the number of dimensions. And the idea is you can reduce the number of dimensions and then does that give you a useful model that people who are trying to find a, a, a similar um, whiskey or a different whiskey would find valuable. And so that's the kind of thing we do. And there's different ways to reduce the dimensions and there's different ways to do this clustering. And um, yeah, some, some of the, some little pictures there show some of the options that are available. We'll, we'll dive in and just have a look at how you might explore this sort of stuff. So this is, I, I dived into decks, tried to explore, so see all, probably, probably the, well, the, the table doesn't um, help much trying to understand the different whiskies. You've just got a bunch of numbers. If, if you try to do various kind of pie, pie charts and things, it still isn't very, uh, Insightful, even, even the multicolored bar chart thing that's there is showing you the 86 whiskies and showing each of the sweetness and spicy and nutty are different colors on that chart. But it's if, if I knew I liked one of those bar charts and I was trying to find another one that I might then like, I'd struggle to, to find uh, something that, you know, I could probably visually eye off a couple of them, but it's going to be hard to get some useful data that's not much more than uh, guesswork. Um, but anyhow, we, we can try doing various kinds of plots. Uh, well, this, this is just a scatter plot that's plotting the different things. I've used color and I've used, uh, what I've tried to do is plot each dimension against every each, each other dimension. So let's plot spicy versus sweet, spicy versus nutty, spicy versus uh, medicinal. Now we'll do, um, honey versus tobacco, honey versus medicinal, honey versus, you know, you do that across all the dimensions. I get these graphs, where, where does all my whiskies fit? Doesn't help me much to, to analyze these things. Um, I can, again, try to squeeze in some other dimensions in there and I can go a little bit better. And again, the, the code to do this isn't much, but I can get, you, you, and by the way, you've got the code to pop <clears throat> in the repo, You've got the code to pop that picture up on your um, on your screen, so you'll be able to run that if, if that's you, you want to see. It's, it's it's impressive, but does it help me do any predictions based on the the nuances of one scotch for, and to try to find another scotch? It it's slightly useful because I can see some you know on some of the pictures I can see oh there's a few red towers and then there's a few yellow behind them or. A, or something else behind them and oh, there's another one like that so maybe those two are similar so it's, it's kind of useful but it's but it's, it's just um it's it's uh not something that's amenable to a useful predictive model very very well so what we're going to do is um use uh, an algorithm called k-means and it's going to try to find my clusters and what i do is i i spit out all my um things uh, onto a, I, I use dimension reductionality to, to put it into 2D. Then I use, I, I just go and pick, I'm going to pick ra three random points as to start my clusters. Let's pick those three, three different colors that are there. And what I go and do is basically see how close all of the different things are, or you fit, fit them to their nearest, nearest uh, cluster, basically. Um, so, you can see that some of them have been turned red. They're going to merge into the red cluster. Some are purple and some are green. And what I then do is calculate the centroid of all the the, the uh, dots I just picked. So I throw away the exist current centroid and pick the new one. And now I start and assume, okay, assuming these are my new centers of my clusters, I reallocate all the points to now what's the nearest to the new center. And some of them are going to change. Oop, if I get my cursor in the screen, um, some of them changed co uh, colors. And then I find the new centroid and I continue doing that until either it doesn't move or it, it moves uh, with some minimal uh, limit. 
And then I can say, right, I've now got some clusters and I've now got a model and I can now uh, use that. And that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to use a, a radar plot to see how well we, we group things. <clears throat> um, so there's our, we, we picked five uh, clusters here and did that process that I showed you before. So instead of having three dots, we had five, and we just stepped through, stepped through, stepped through. And then we, we uh, for each of the clusters, we found out what the the uh, average of each of those um, characteristics is. So for cluster one, floral was zero. And for um, cluster four, what was one, two, three, four, tobacco, uh, body, uh, medicinal or tobacco was zero. But for cluster five, medicinal or tobacco, whichever one it is, is one. So um, we, we draw them as a radar plot. And now this shows me where my different whiskies are, are fitting in. So we can see uh, that gives me some information. If I get now have a new whiskey, I can go and uh, rank, rank all of its features, work out where that is on this plot. And I, it'll, I can say, oh, that fits in the blue blob that fits in the orange blob, that fits in the yellow blob. It's probably one of those, I could give names to each of my uh, clusters. One might be the fruity, floral, fruity florally uh, whiskies. Um, and you'd know that something fits into that cluster. Okay, and we, we're gonna basically do the same thing again with a few different uh, technologies. There's a few different variations you can do as well. Um, there's a different one there. So you can see the, what's the difference? Very, very similar. Where's the green one? They actually probably are the same. I think that's the same graph, but just with two different technologies. Is it? No, no, because body cluster one is, uh, oh, hang on, two and then two, one, three. Yeah, so that's done a different grouping because I used a different, um, Strategy. I've used a slightly different K-means clustering thing that did some slightly different, smarter stuff. Okay. Yep. So. Yep. So what I've. Um, yeah. What? Yeah. Sorry. What, um, well, what I was trying to show you here was so this one here actually found the um, the mean of the, the cluster group and spit that out. An alternative that you might want to do is, is the medoid. And what the medoid is going to be basically is the average you found before, but it's going to be a real data point that's closest to that average. And so this particular thing has gone and worked that out for us, which is why the, the numbers there are very slightly different. Okay. Um, now we can, so they were actually um, basically putting things in, oh, Yeah, into the into the radar charts. What we're going to do now is uh, do the dimension actually uh, dimension reduction, and try to visualize what's what's going on with all those things. So this now puts all my things onto. I've got a two D graph, even though I've got five different uh, clusters, and however many what on twelve different features. So um, here I'm going to use uh, table saw and smile. To, to be visualizing everything. Table saw is, is a data frame technology. I'm going to be reading in the whiskey file. It includes a dimension actually reduction thing. I'm going to tell it project it down onto two dimensions. And then I use my k-means um, on that. And then I do, do that as a graph. Now I can do two dimensions or three dimensions. And this will show you all of your um, things in, in uh, those dimensions. Let me just see if I can. Okay, let me stop sharing <clears throat> that one and I'll just swap over quickly.
let me get rid of no I have to keep it over there too that'll be easier so these are now my um, cluster variations and you can see how they've been put into three dimensions and I've got a fourth dimension which is size of bubble and I've got a fifth dimension which is color um, so they're all the different whiskies so you can see it's grouped this this cluster all around here and there's another blue cluster in here and so on and so forth. The, these ones are more intermingled and you could decide, is that actually five different things here or is the orange and the red, are they, should I actually only have four clusters or should I only have three clusters? <clears throat> and um, in fact, k-means, which is one of the, uh, well, that's actually this one here. Uh, it'll actually try to find the best number of, uh, clusters as well so there's different algorithms will do different slightly different things okay let me stop that one so you'll be able to play with those there is um similar sort of graphs in the um in the notebooks as well but won't be it won't be that exact same one this particular graph is is um putting a big round blob where the centroids are so it helps you visualize where the center of your cluster is okay you can try different you can try two dimensions three dimensions and so on um that's what and the screen plot's going to help you try to find what the best the best thing is so as you can see by the time i get to the last one there three six six colors there's a lot of overlap between my my different things so probably two or three maybe four different clusters is is probably um what what you really want if you look at the um the first graph so what a screen plot is going to be doing is looking at the number of dimensions where uh, which is those things there see how there's a, uh, a the bottom red line in in the top left hand of the six graphs it's got a kink that's happening at dimension three um, that's what you'd use to say yes three is going to be the the best number the best bang for buck in terms of number of clusters here Okay, so if you if you see a kink like that, you'll know if I go beyond that, I'm uh, getting less less bang for my buck. I'm not really adding a lot of value by introducing the new clusters. There's a lot of overlap or similarity between the cluster the clusters, but I get a lot of bang for buck going for, going uh, up to three. Okay, and um, then you can go and look at X means, which tries to find out that that maximum number of clusters as part of the algorithm you'll be able to do that if you want and just very very briefly this isn't in the um the these ones aren't really in the um the notebook stuff but they're there if you want to run them on um on groovy you can do various kinds of heat maps and things as well so there's various kinds of uh, dendrograms which try to split you know if i look at all of my features and i'm trying to if i had to pick one feature that was going to split my whiskies into two what feature would it be and i'd put that at the top and uh, that would be the biggest distinction but uh between all of the uh, you know using that feature would uh be, be the best way to split things into two distinct groups and then i'd say well what's the next best character Thing to characterize the groups and so on and uh, that can be a useful thing to do so you can go try that now um this won't be in your notebooks either but if you wanted to scale that up it turns out that there is ways to to 
uh, scale it up and there's ignite versions and um, spark versions of both of those as well okay so time to stop stop me talking again and i want you to go and either look at the code or run it in a notebook or run the uh the code and uh see how you you go i'll give you about 15 minutes to go run some code if there's people who've got questions feel free to write any questions in the chat or uh, let me know if you want to join and ask a video question and otherwise i'll uh, give you time to run everything if there's an example that you're struggling to run and you'd, you'd like to see it run uh, let me know and i'll put it on uh, my screen Okay, so...